Hi everyone, I hope you're having a great International Day of Women and Girls in Science Day today. Um, my name is Courtney and I'm a science communication intern for the Center for Research in Occupational Safety and Health at Laurentian University. Um, and I have a master's degree and a bachelor's degree in biology. And for my degrees, what I looked, like, looked at was genetics and fruit flies, so genetics in these little guys. Now, as I'm not in the lab at uh, the, currently, and as you can see, I am working from home. We can't actually do an experiment with fruit flies today, but I thought we could still do something that's genetics based. So what we're actually going to do is a DNA extraction. So basically, we are going to start out with a banana. We're going to process it, and then by the end of it, you'll be able to see banana DNA. So what you're going to start with is half a banana, and you'll also need a Ziploc bag. It doesn't really matter the size that you use, but for the Smaller is kind of just easier to work with. So you're going to start with half a banana. And you're just going to put it in the bag, and this is kind of the fun part because you just get to squish it. So basically, you're looking for sort of a smoothie consistency. So smooth with a few lumps. The smoother is kind of the better. And so this this step is basically just sort of breaking down the, the banana and sort of starting to break down so the cell walls and the cell membranes just so we can get the DNA out. This is kind of like in digestion, chewing is the first step just to make things smaller and easier for the digestion juices to work on. So when your banana looks like this. So it should be about squished enough, just as long as there's no huge chunks, you should be pretty good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of water and a little bit of salt to it. So we're going to add about a third of a cup to a half a cup of water. You kind of need enough to get the banana sort of semi dissolved into it. A little bit more. Sort of it'll depend a little bit on how big your banana is. And we're just going to zip the bag back up so you don't lose any and then just mix the water and the banana together. Now be a little bit gentle. You don't want to sort of destroy the, the cells in what you're trying to do too badly. So we just sort of gently float it. And now we're going to add a pinch of salt and mix that in. So you can just use table salt and just sort of a pinch. And then you want to mix it so that's dissolved in. So again, just sort of gentle mixing. Your banana looks sort of like that. You should be good. Now for this step, we're going to add some dish soap to our mixture. Now, when we squished the banana, that was sort of starting, like the very beginning step to sort of breaking down the banana and just sort of making it easier for us to, the, sort of individualizing the cells so it is, it's easier to process them. And the job of the dish soap is to basically break apart the cell walls and the membrane around the DNA, so the nuclear membrane. Now dish soap works when you do dishes because it bonds with the grease so you can clean it off. And the cell membranes are fatty, so that's why the dish soap works to break it apart. Now the salt we added, it's sort of uh, works with or after the dish soap where once the DNA is sort of going to be in the water after the cells have broken apart, the salt just sort of helps it stick together so it's in bigger clumps and it'll be easier to see. So we're just going to add a couple drops of dish soap. Now what we're going to do is mix the dish, dish soap into the banana mixture, but you want to do this really gently because you don't want it to foam up like crazy. So 
if you just sort of rock the liquid back and forward, it'll mix in fairly well. If you're using a colored dish soap, so this one's this one's green, but whatever you have at home, um, once you can't really see the color in the mixture anymore, um, it should be mixed in fairly well. If you can still see green or blue or purple or whatever color your dish soap is, you gotta sort of keep going. So I still have a giant patch of green, so I'm just gonna keep mixing that in. And again, you're just trying not to make it fizz up too crazy, so don't don't just shake the bag. That's pretty good. Now that's sort of what you want, minimal, middle, minimal bubbling of your bananas. So we're just gonna set that aside for a second. And what we're gonna do is set up a filter. So basically we've got our banana mixture, the soap at this point should have worked to break apart the cells and expose the DNA and then the salt will help those cells to clump together. But to see the DNA, we want to filter out basically the chunks of banana there, just because if we looked at the DNA in this sort of mix or this sort of just as, as it is, you wouldn't be able to see it very well just because there's still sort of chunks of banana in there. So the next step is filtering it. So basically we're just going to take the chunks out and then have the DNA banana water in the bottom. So to do this, you just need a coffee filter, uh, a tall, clear glass, and there's sort of two ways to put this together. If you have a funnel, you can just put the funnel in the top and the coffee filter directly into the funnel, and that's kind of the easier way. If you don't have a funnel, um, what you're going to do is just put the coffee filter into the top of the glass, and then fold the edges down, and use an elastic band to hold it in place. Now. What we're going to do is pour the banana mixture through the coffee filter, then you get the chunks in the, fil in the coffee filter and then the, the, the water that you want in the bottom. If you've got a setup like this without the funnel, you're going to have to pour slowly because if you just dump it all in once, the filter will just fall and, you, and that sort of defeats the purpose of filtering it. So if that happens, it's not the end of the world. You can just take the filter out and then set a dug up again and refilter it. Um, it's just you don't you don't necessarily want to have to do that extra step. <laughs> if you're doing a funnel, you're still going to want to pour it fairly slowly just because the opening is smaller, so it won't run through as quickly. All right, so we're just going to slowly pour our banana mixture through the paper. And this will take a couple minutes just to get the majority of the liquid to run through. All right, so once your banana mixture sort of starts slowing down, um, to sort of get the last bit out, you can take the elastic band off. Now, be careful when you do this, you want to hold the filter in place um, so that the stuff doesn't just fall into the cup. So then you just kind of carefully peel up the edges and lift it up. And then as you do that and put pressure on it, it should filter out a little bit faster if you still got a bit of water sitting in it. All right, and that's probably pretty good. That is most of my water um, from my banana. So I'm just gonna set the filter aside and for the next step, what we're going to do is add rubbing alcohol to the mixture. So we've got our water here with the banana DNA that should be inside of it, if this is all gone correctly. And we can't see it at the moment because the DNA is 
basically dissolved in the water. Now, we're going to add rubbing alcohol on top and basically the DNA can dissolve in water but it can't dissolve in the rubbing alcohol. So by putting the alcohol on top, the DNA will come out and you'll be able to see it. Now, we're going to add we're going to have to be careful when we add the rubbing alcohol because it has to be done really slowly. So if you just dumped it in, it would mix with the water and then it wouldn't, um, you wouldn't see the DNA come out. So what you have to do is pour it really, really carefully. So it forms a separate layer that's going to sit on top of your water mixture. So to do that, um, just tip your glass really gently and then just carefully pour it so the ethanol runs down the side of the glass. And by doing this really, really slowly like this, it won't mix with the water mixture and it'll form a layer on top. So you're going to need a bit of rubbing alcohol and it's about an inch. And for your DNA, it's basically going to form between the water layer and the ethanol layer. So you'll be able to see it as a whole pile of bubbles between the two layers and I can actually already see a whole pile of DNA. So all these bubbles here, this is all the banana DNA coming out into the alcohol. So we're just going to let it sit for a minute and let more of the DNA come out and then if you have a stirring rod or a skewer or something you can actually collect some of the DNA. So we're going to let it sit for a couple minutes and then we're going to collect some DNA so we can sort of look at it but all those bubbles that are forming that's all the DNA. So we've been letting our DNA sit for a couple minutes so I'll just show you the glass and so you can see this whole layer of bubbles here, this is all your banana DNA that has come out of your banana water mixture. So if we just take our skewer and if you just very gently swirl it around in your DNA, sort of like twirling spaghetti on a fork, you should be able to collect some of that DNA on the end of your skewer. It is much harder than it looks. A fork actually might be easier. Now this is just a little bit because it's not really working to stick on the skewers, but that is some of our extracted banana DNA. So hope you guys learned something today and you can feel free to try this experiment with some other fruit. I know it works well with strawberries, but if you want to give something else a try, feel free. That's what scientists do. They experiment and find out the answers for things. So I hope you guys had a good are having a good day and that you had fun and learned something with this experiment and that you thought seeing some banana DNA was cool. Have a great day everyone.